up guys welcome back to the channel and on today's video we're doing we're doing a battle we're doing a shootout between two max cushion super trainers going head to head we have the new balance sc trainer v2 against the atlas prime x2 strong let's get into it Before we get started, I want to let you know that this video is in collaboration with Roadrunner Sports. Roadrunner Sports was good enough to send me both the SC Trainer V2 and the Prime X2 Strong for the purpose of review. However, they're not going to get a chance to see this video before you do, and all the thoughts and opinions are my own. Well, that's it. These shoes are comparable in a lot of ways, but there's a few ways that they are pretty separate. First is the price. The New Balance SC Trainer V2 will cost you $180, which when my review of this shoe went live, some people were saying $180 is pretty expensive for a super trainer. But my friends, that is nothing. That is, that's cheap. Cheap compared with the Prime X2 Strunk, which will set you back $300. So we've got $180 against $300. But for the rest of this review, I want you to put the price aside and just listen. Just listen to how they compare because there are some differences and maybe, just maybe, it will justify spending $120 extra and picking up the Prime X2 Strong. I mean, I doubt it. That's that's a lot of money, but it might. Okay, next up. These are both Max Cushion Super Trainers and a trainer becomes super when you put a carbon fiber plate in them. So both of these have carbon fiber plates. We'll talk more about those in just a second. But as far as the stack eye goes, as far as that element that makes it Max Cushion, the SC Trainer V2 has 40 millimeters in the heel, 34 millimeters in the forefoot for a six millimeter drop. The Adidas Prime X2 Strong has 50 millimeters in the heel, 43.5 millimeters in the forefoot for a six and a half millimeter drop. So as far as the drop goes, these are fairly similar, six, six and a half. But the Prime X2 Strong tops out at 50 millimeters of stack height in the heel. That's quite a bit more padding. Next up, let's talk about weight. Well, before we talk about weight, let me say when I talk about each element of these shoes, let me kind of tell you what I think makes a winner in each segment. So with price, obviously the new balance SC Trainer V2 wins that round. But with stack height, for a max cushion, we're going to give it to the Prime X2 Strong with its 50 millimeters. I mean, the stack height of this shoe makes this one look like a racing plat. And then as far as the drop goes, we're going to call that a draw. Six and six and a half is just too close to call. That's a tie. Now let's talk about weight. New Balance claims that in a US men's size 9, the SC Trainer V2 will tip the scale at 9.7 ounces or 275 grams. However, in my size, a US men's size 13, the SC Trainer tips the scale at 11.8 ounces or 335 grams. Now the Adidas Prime X2 Strong is just a little heavier. Adidas claims that a US men's size 9 tips the scale at 10 ounces or 283 grams. However, in my size, a US men's size 13, the Prime X2 Strong tips the scale at 13.9 ounces or 393 grams. So, at least in my size, the New Balance SC Trainer V2 weighs 58 grams less than the Prime X2 Strong, making the SC Trainer V2 the clear winner in the weight round. Okay, let's go over let's go over some of the materials on each of the shoes. Let's start at the top and work our way down on the New Balance. Now, the SC Trainer V2 is a far more traditional shoe. We've got a fairly padded heel collar and a nice rigid heel counter. Like, I can feel that. I can't even push down the back. I get a good heel lockdown in the SC Trainer V2. We also have a nice, very airy engineered mesh upper. We've got quite a few overlays on the SC Trainer V2. We've got the, the branding on both sides. And then the knit is just slightly tighter in some places, giving a little structure to the upper. And of course, in the areas where there isn't that increased mesh on the upper, we have a very thin mesh and that makes for just superb breathability in this shoe. The SC Trainer V2 has a very traditional lacing system. Got some overlays coming up the eyelid chain. Now the tongue is super light super thin, super breathable. Am I overusing the word super? And the tongue is gusseted. We also have a lace loop right on the front. So all that to say this, I didn't experience any tongue migration when wearing the SC Trainer V2. All in all, it's a very comfortable fit, a very nice feeling upper. Coming over to the Prime X2 Strong, it's a little different. Now, if you look at the top here, we've got bolsters on each side of the heel collar. We don't have that padding all the way around. Now, that doesn't mean anything other than it's different, but we've got the padding on both sides of the heel collar, nothing along the heel. And the heel counter on the Prime X2 Strong is, well, it's non-existent. You can push that down right like that. The shoe just collapses. Much more of a race shoe feel with the Prime X2 Strong than the SC Trainer V2. The upper on the Prime X2 Strong is, just as the name suggests, the Strong upper. I think as far as looks, aesthetics goes, I'm gonna give it to the Prime X2 Strong. I just love this strong upper. And the type of the upper, the fit and all that is exactly the opposite of the SC Trainer V2. The tongue is a knit material and it's sewn into the upper and you've got a little more of a booty fit. Not a little more, it is a booty fit. It's a lot more of a challenge to put your foot into the Prime X2 Strong. But once it's in there, the upper wraps around your foot nicely. Now, as far as the lacing and the eyelets go, this is a little different. This is, this is not traditional. We've actually got little holes cut into the upper and then there are little loops sewn into the upper and then the laces are just weaved through them. And then on the top, 
on both the medial and the lateral side. We have a little plastic addition right here for the top two eyelet holes, just giving a little more support when you actually want to lock down the top of the shoe. Now, I'm not going to go into it here. If you want to see my full thoughts on the Primex Too Strong, I do have a full review of that. But you can see how I've missed some eyelet chains right here. And basically that's because I was getting some hot spots from the eyelets when the laces were locked down. I was able to eliminate those hot spots just by missing that little eyelet. That's the reason I haven't laced the shoe completely. If we come down to the midsole in the SC Trainer V2, we're using Fuel Cell. Now, Fuel Cell is probably one of the most comfortable midsole foams that I have ever run in. I am a fan of nice, soft, plush cushioning and the fuel cell gives it to me. Now we've actually got two layers of fuel cell because sandwiched in between those fuel cell layers are New Balance's carbon fiber plate. They are calling it their energy arc, but the energy arc is kind of a blend of technologies. It's when they combine their carbon fiber plate technology with these midsole voids that just promotes propulsion. And then coming down to the outsole rubber, we can see we've got, we've got plenty of outsole rubber right where it matters. We've got a little bit of rubber here here in the middle, but I'm not actually sure that that part actually touches the ground at all. In fact, looking at it, I'm not seeing anywhere. Ah, maybe it does. Maybe that fuel cell foam compresses enough where that little, little purple bit on my colorway touches the ground. But either way, we've got a good amount of outsole rubber. But look at this, look here on the lateral outside edge. I am seeing a little bit of wear. In fact, those little grooves that they put into the outsole rubber just to promote grip have been totally worn away on my pair of the SC Trainer V2. And I do have a little bit of wear on the midsole foam. So, I don't know. I thought that was a little bit disappointing that they're wearing down that much already. But let's move on over to the Primex 2 Strung and let's talk about this midsole. Now, this is where the shoes kind of differ because Adidas is using their top of the line race day foam in the Primex 2 Strung. In fact, we have three layers of Light Strike Pro in the Primex 2 Strung. Well, I think technically we've got two layers, but even though this middle layer here is Light Strike Pro, it's a much softer formulation and that's Adidas's energy core. Now, have you ever thought about how a carbon fiber plate kind of makes you faster or makes you feel faster sometimes, you probably wondered what would happen if you put two carbon fiber plates into a shoe. And when you run in the Primex 2 Strong, that's exactly what you're gonna find out because on top of this energy core right here, we have a full length carbon fiber plate. And then running on the lower side of this energy core, we have a three quarter length carbon fiber plate. And you can see that lower plate right here peeking out on both sides. And then if you look at the bottom, you have this little cut out in the midsole and you can see the bottom carbon fiber plate with another little window cut into it. And through that window, you can see the top carbon fiber plate. So it's all there. Two plates, twice the stiffness, and that makes the Primex too strong. Probably the stiffest shoe that I have ever felt. There is no bending this shoe. It is like trying to bend a brick. Now, when we compare that with the SC Trainer V2, you can see that the carbon fiber plate is quite a bit more pliable, although I wouldn't call this a bendy shoe. This is still quite stiff, but it's like a wet noodle compared with the Primex 2 Strong when it comes to flexibility. The outsole rubber on the Primex 2 Strong is continental rubber. Now it looks fairly slick on the bottom, but I didn't run into any issues with grip. And as far as wear goes, this continental rubber is holding up remarkably well. In fact, it is very difficult for me to see any wear on the bottom of this shoe. Now, admittedly, I have had the SC Trainer V2 for a little longer. I put a few more miles in the SC Trainer V2, but I've been really enjoying running in the Primex 2 Strong. And I've put a fair amount of miles in it and for me to not see anywhere at this point is it's surprising remarkable and frankly it's great news for anyone buying the Primex 2 Strong because it looks like this is really gonna last. Now let's talk about ride because the rides are completely different. The SC Trainer V2 is a nice, soft, very forgiving, very comfortable ride. I have really enjoyed taking this shoe out for all types of runs, not races. I wouldn't recommend racing in either of these shoes, but if I did have to race in one of them, I will tell you which one in just a second. But the New Balance SC Trainer V2 is just, it's comfortable at all speeds. And then when you start to pick up the pace, when you start loading that plate, it does feel, it does feel a little poppy when you pick up the pace, but it doesn't feel poppy enough where I would ever choose this as a race day shoe. Ah, I just said I wouldn't choose this for a race day shoe, which means you know what I'm gonna choose if I had to pick one as a race day shoe. But we're gonna keep going as if you didn't hear that. I guess what I wanna say is that if you suffer from plate fatigue when you run in a plated shoe, I don't think you're gonna get that feeling in the SC Trainer V2. It's a very versatile and very forgiving ride. But because it's such a versatile and forgiving ride, it just, it doesn't feel as fast when you pick up the pace. The Primex 2 Strung, on on the other hand, look, they're already using their race day foams. We have two carbon fiber plates. And even though that the shoe is 58 grams heavier than the SC Trainer V2, I would probably grab this. If I had to pick one for a race, I'd probably go with a Primex 2 Strong. And that's because this shoe feels a lot more aggressive than the SC Trainer V2. And I think that is definitely a combination of the midsole foams, the two carbon fiber plates, and of course the geometry. We've got a big toe spring right here. If we compare the two, we can see that it's a lot more pronounced than on the SC Trainer V2. So when you get 
get up on your toes in the Prime X2 Strong, it just feels like it's moving you forward a little better. It's that feeling that you want and you expect when you run in a carbon plated shoe. With that said, it's not like some of these other carbon plated racers where they're only good at race day and they just don't perform at easier paces. The Prime X2 Strong performs well at every pace. Well, maybe not intervals, and I say probably not intervals just because of the weight of the shoe, but anything up to marathon, maybe even half marathon pace, I think the Prime X2 Strong feels really good. Now, most of my miles that I've done in the Prime X2 Strong and the SC Trainer V2 have been easy miles, but I have done several workouts in both of these shoes. I gotta say, they both feel good. The Prime X2 Strong feels remarkably faster and poppier, but the SC Trainer V2 ultimately has more all around comfort. I remember I was talking about this, these hot spots that I got on the top of my foot on the Prime X2 Strong. I've got no complaints with comfort on the SC Trainer V2. Once I put my foot into this, it just felt good the entire time that I was wearing it. So, listen, I know I'm sending mixed messages. Super comfortable, it does the job. I think this fits the bill as a very good super trainer. But the Prime X2 Strong is like a super, super trainer. So I guess it really comes down to what you're looking for. Now, let's just, let's just pretend they're the same price. Because honestly, I think the Prime X2 Strong is cost prohibitive for a lot of people. But let's say they were exactly the same. If you were looking for comfort, if you just wanted to baby your feet and have your whole body feel good, I'd go with the SC Trainer V2. I love how I feel when I'm running in this shoe. But if you're looking for something fun, then you definitely need to pick up a pair of the Prime X2 Strong. This is a very very fun shoe to run in. And look, before I got the Prime X2 Strong, I would have said that the SC Trainer V2 was a fun shoe to run in. But when they go head to head, the SC Trainer V2 is more like a, a five-year-old birthday party kind of fun. And the Prime X2 Strong is more like an all expenses paid weekend in Dubai type of fun. You know, we're all adults. We'd probably rather this kind of fun. Anyway, I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you have a super trainer at the time? If so, which one do you choose? If you had the choice of either of these, which one would you choose? Do you think the Prime X2 is too expensive? Let me know in the comments. And with that, it's Matt B. This has been my review of the New Balance SC Trainer V2 versus the Adidas Prime X2 Strong. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.